brothers and sisters. Shalom. It's snowing again. Had to bring my wife to work. I got the big snow tires on my raggedy old 2004 Dodge Dakota that has 196,065 miles on it. So, as you can see, it's snow everywhere. Every war is snow. And we are blessed to be alive and not at nuclear war with Russia as of yet. But remember my video from eight years ago where the Lord showed me that there was a nuclear attack initiated by Russia and China. I've had a couple of dreams about maybe five, six dreams about this. I don't know why uh, when I first started serving the Lord in 2011, all I could think about was the rapture. I didn't think about, hey, this is a possibility or that is a possibility. All I thought about was the Lord is coming. The rapture is going to, especially after November 5th of 2011. Because I was, uh, I didn't pray for a rapture dream. All I did, we've got two street lights, or three street lights in this town and this one's blinking. It's been blinking for days now. There's the Shell station. A price of $4.99 for fuel. <laughs> the big American flag at the a Burger King, most dirtiest restaurant in town. And there's the pizza factory and the old donut and ice cream shop that went out of business because they were making their donuts with peanut oil and <laughs> nobody wants peanut oil. So, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And he's he died on the cross for our sins. And it's through his blood alone that all of our sins are wiped away and all we have to do is believe in him if you believe in me you shall never die you know there's so many great scriptures and you quote them and then some people will say you know what you're a greasy gracer you know what it's more than that let me tell you about the other things it is you skipped all these other things brother and they want to do battle with you they pull out their sword and they begin and they began jousting with you like an old time knight of the round table because it's hilarious to them they want to look the snow plows are coming up there's one pulling onto the road over there and one passed us on the way but we can have peace and we can know yes it is about greasy grace <laughs> it's about Jesus Christ that's a, such a hateful term greasy gracers you know and I was watching this interview with David Wilkerson and these Jesus people when they had the Jesus movement back in the 70s. And and they were talking about, yeah, I guess a lot of them were ex-drug addicts and stuff and they'd use drugs, you know, and they were trying to get off of drugs. And uh, David Wilkerson was saying, hey, I thought I heard you guys saying it's okay to do marijuana you know and stuff and they're like no we didn't say that you said that and he's like no I didn't you said it and they went back and forth and and then they quoted in the scripture about that he has a big fancy house and, and a $500 suit on and he's like what about they're like well, what about this scripture what well, we're quoting scriptures how about the one about um sell all that you have and give it to the poor redistribute everything to the poor and come and follow me how about that one? And you go, they go, you look pretty fine and pretty uh, all put together with your rich tuxedo that you're wearing and your suit and your nice fancy house. We've investigated you a little bit, Mr. Wilkerson. I forgot I was going to stop and take some pictures and I started doing this video and forgot everything I was going to do. But um, it's just amazing to me. 
you know, they were quoting the scriptures, and David was, Wilkerson was going, uh, yeah, uh, 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 but, but, uh, nah, but, here's the dam project right here. They built all this new, redirected the road, and they're repairing this because the, the dam here goes over a fault line, and then whenever the United States government, Department of, um, they had a special department that did roads and stuff like that during the WPA and all that. They built this bridge, the Army Corps of Engineers. They tested the soil and they went, hey, there's not enough clay in this to make this a proper earth mound dam. You can see the, it's a huge dam. And there's not enough clay in it. And they're like, oh well, we'll make it anyway. <laughs> That's typical of the U.S. government and the thinking of these senators and people that are in charge of this because it wasn't their money. You see, they could have hauled in clay, but that would have cost something. But you know what? Now to do it, it cost them probably 100 to 200 times more amount of money to re repair this than it did to do it right the first time. But that's our government. The same thing happened with Obamacare. I was going through the medical system because I didn't have insurance and they were taking care of it and I had these little co-pays and stuff. Obama came in there, we're gonna fix this insurance for everybody and it'll be really great and all this stuff and then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden I lost my health care. And that place, the place was packed every day. There was all these, you know, indigent people and people from all walks of life, they were black people, and white people, and poor people, and everybody was in this hospital, and then all of a sudden, Obama takes over and does his tricks, and none of them have health care. <laughs> now they gotta pay for it, and they had no money. It's like Biden gets up there and talks about, it's just a small cost to buy an electric vehicle for the economy and all this, when every single thing that we have is based on oil. That's where our fertilizer comes from. Oil is 100% natural. It occurs in the earth. Before mankind was here, oil was in the earth. All we have to do is mine it out just like the other natural resources that we have. But our president, who says he was Puerto Rican and he was whatever, you know what? If a Martian landed, he'd say, you know, during my early years, uh, yeah, yeah, you won't believe it, but uh, I'm, I'm three quarter Martian. That's what I am. I uh, was there, you know, during my early years, my childhood. You know, I spent my pre-K years going to a Martian kindergarten and stuff. And just, you know, this guy is a chameleon. There's a guy that really looks and acts like him, and he's on that Monsters Incorporated cartoon that Disney made. He was the one that could become invisible or whatever. Horrible. Horrible. You know, he sold his soul to Satan. And um, really, that's what's happened to this president. 47 years, he got nothing done but enriches himself. On a senator's salary, he's worth over a hundred and something million dollars. And his son makes $80,000 a month working for Burisma. And he's he doesn't have a drop. I have more oil field knowledge in my little pinky than Joe Biden's son has in his entire body. My sweat that drips off of me has more in it than that. This guy is, this is horrific. And the people of this country have put up with it for years because all of those congressmen are corrupt. Biden's just at the top of it. You know, when you have a dung hill, there's always some dung at the top of it. I hate to say stuff like that about our president, but he's a horrific person and he's got, he's got us at the brink of thermonuclear war, not just nuclear war. You see these bombs that the Russians have on the end of these SLBM missiles or these Satan II missiles that they're ground-based ones, which they've all started moving around. It's snowing. Those missiles have a thermonuclear warhead on them. That means it's a hydrogen bomb. And the way hydrogen bombs work is there is a nuclear explosion that does the compression and and triggers the hydrogen that's in that bomb. There's usually a metal that once it's heated 
and compressed, it turns into hydrogen, which fuels the hydrogen explosion. They used to use gas, but a lot of maintenance on that gas, you know, you got to replace it every so many years. So you may be at this cycle time when you need to replace it when a war happens. But Jesus Christ died for our sins. You know, and I've had all these dreams and uh, about this attack that's coming. And uh, in fact, in 2018, I had a, another one where the Lord showed me that the attack was coming. It's going to happen. And, I, and my son was with me. And so after, after that, I said, Lord, why is my son in these dreams? And he says to me, he represents Abraham. And the Abrahamic promise, you know, God met with Abraham in 25 years before Isaac was born, God had promised Abraham a son. And Abraham was already 75 years old, and his wife is about 10 years younger, so she was 65. They're way past childbearing years. And God made a covenant with that man, and you know what the covenant was? Hey, I'm going to be your God, and I'm going to give you this this property, this free gift. I'm going to give you this land and all this stuff. And you know what? What did Abraham have to do? He did. He sacrificed to the Lord, and he told him, "This will be a sign of our covenant. You're gonna you're gonna um, cut the foreskin off of your manliness, and that will be a sign between you and I that we have a." A covenant together and so beautiful thing brothers and sisters what God did because without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin there can't be a covenant all covenants when a man marries a woman and she the way it's supposed to work is the women are supposed to be virgins and so are the men and whenever they consummate their marriage there is blood shed and that is a covenant between that man and woman forever. And that's why Jesus said, even when a woman commits adultery and you can put her away, <clears throat> Jesus said, God didn't want it this way. He didn't want it this way because how do you separate two flesh that have become one? You know, Bruce Lee used to be like my hero of, of martial arts. I was into martial arts for years. And I was really good. At least they said I was. But the thing is, Bruce Lee had a poem that he wrote. And he said, let's take to his wife. He said, we'll take two lumps of clay. We'll take, a, take two lumps of clay and we'll make an image of you and an image of me. And then we'll, we'll put those two images of ourselves together and smash them until we have a lump of clay again. And there's no difference between the two images. They're just a ball of clay. And then we will take that ball of clay and from it we will make an image of you and an image of me. So that in my clay is some of your clay. And in your clay is some of my clay. And we will always be together. What a beautiful thing that he wrote and he talked about. And brothers and sisters, that's how God wants it to be. He wants to be inside of us, part of us, with this great covenant that he made between us because he's a God of love. You see, if he was a God of laws, the, the first covenant would not have been done away with. Yeah, I said it. Read it. Paul wrote about it. He talks about the testator and the testor and all these things. And he explains to you quite plainly that that old covenant has passed away. That there's a new covenant. And it was signed and sealed by the blood of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. He sealed it with His blood because He loves us. And we belong to Him. And we are brothers. And He treated those men that were disciples as brothers. He loved them and treated them with love and kindness and mercy. And he tried to teach them because they were under the old law. And everything they thought about was about this old law. And how the old law 
is this or that and how and how it how you were saved by it and you were saved by keeping all these rules and regulations put this thing in four wheel drive going up this hill anyway Dodge is a beautiful truck man it is this thing has never let me down never it's like the Lord, he'll never let you down. Look at my big tree, it's reaching out over here. I'm gonna have to cut that branch, but generally when you do, it dies. And uh, I'm gonna pull in the driveway here. You guys have been with me the whole way, you know? Isn't this amazing? I'm taking you on this journey in the snow with me. This thing in reverse, back in here while I'm talking to you. You know, Jesus Christ, we have such so much to be thankful for brothers and sisters and you know we have the opportunity every day to pray and to seek the lord and to read our bible and to search for god the the majesty and the glory of god almighty that's contained within his holy word you know and because that first covenant was done away with it he talks about why this the necessity of that covenant to be done away with you see, that covenant couldn't really save you because it was the blood of animals that were sacrificed. Animals died. And so that, it wasn't good enough. You know, it's a foreshadowing just like when we see when Adam and Eve sinned. And there was only one rule in the kingdom. You can eat from any of these trees here. You just can't eat from this tree in the center of the the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil don't don't do that because in the day that you do that you'll die was God's word of none effect because they both ate from that tree and they didn't die that day did they in fact Adam lived to be 960 years or so old before he died so God must have been talking about something else right is a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day is one thing and so Adam died within that first day of the Lord Ikayas, Ikea son the Bohukai, Kia Lalabos shun the Bohusi, Inokaya, Kia son the Bohukias. Glory, hallelujah, glory under the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you for dying for us on that cross. Lord, for enduring that as they sped upon, spat upon your face, Lord, and they struck you. And they covered your head and they struck you and they said, Who is it if you're God? Tell us who hit you. And you loved them, Lord, as they were pounding those nails into your hands on that cross and they dislocated your arm so that it could stretch across that span. Your arm stretched across that span, Lord. And they 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 dislocated your arm, Lord, and they pushed those nails through your hands and your feet Lord and they at the time they were doing it you said Father forgive them for they know not what they do because the God of creation could have destroyed the entire universe at that moment brothers and sisters the Lord loves you yes it is about grace you know and it took me a long time to figure that out myself as i was praying in 19 in uh, 2016 that the lord would let my walk be by grace and by grace alone through faith in christ you know and i had to take a real beat down for the past seven years I had to find out what real truth was you know salvation is the beginning of our walk with Christ and God the Father is like a good father he wants to teach his sons and daughters 
about the about truth. And we have to suffer sometimes some horrific things in our lives to find out about truth, to find out what God really is talking about, about the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. And these pastors that don't understand that, that sit around and preach a gospel of hate and destruction and... You know, a gospel becomes a gospel of punishment. Did I sin today? Did I make a mistake? Is God going to punish me? Jesus Christ died once for all sin from the beginning of Adam's sin to the end of the last man to make it into the kingdom. It's all paid for. And we don't know who those people are, you know. A lot of times we, you know, we judge others that are in whatever places in life like David Wilkerson did. He was judging these hippie guys because they had long hair and beards and they were talking about how you can come to Christ just as I am. That song, just as I am without one plea, that song. You know, we come to Christ just as we are, brothers and sisters, with all of our warts and dirt on our faces and griminess and all the other garbage and baggage that we have. But as we kneel down to the cross, that stuff begins to fall off, and sometimes it might take days. You see, Paul was talking to, bro to his brothers in Hebrews about letting that stuff fall away and that's what he talked about when he was talking about about sin and about falling back because they were going back to the old law and they were thinking that sanctified them and that justified them and that they had to keep doing these things to be saved when that isn't it at all it's by the power of Jesus Christ you know kai kia san do bohu kias yelo lo boshan do bohu kaya Jesus Christ was on that cross and there were two thieves there with him. And one of them accepted what Jesus Christ did. And he went with Christ. He didn't do anything. He wasn't baptized. He wasn't, he didn't stop what he was doing. He was who he was when he came to the cross and he was nailed to it next to Jesus. And he did it by faith. He believed that Jesus Christ was the son of God and that only Jesus Christ can forgive you by believing in him that's how it happened by believing he believed in jesus christ and his sins were forgiven and he was in paradise with him that day and brothers and sisters we can have that peace in our lives we can have that joy in our hearts if we just focus on that and remember that that's the most important thing none of this other garbage that's happening is and those men were trying to tell David Wilkerson that. And he you could see, he could see it in his eyes, in his speech. He knew what they were saying, but yet he wanted to fight against that light that they were shining on him. You see? Because he wanted them to come to Christ all cleaned up. When you're fishing, you know, I've done a lot of fishing in my life. And when you do fishing, you know, you catch this fish and you bring it out and you got to clean that fish. You got to take the scales off of it. Because those aren't good to eat. You know, some trout, you can eat the skin off of it and they're, they're not that bad. But a lot of big ocean fish and other fish have huge scales. And then you, you descale them and then you take that knife and you cut that fish down the belly. And you take out all those entrails out of it, its stomach and uh, digestive system and, uh, and the poop that's inside of it. And there goes some quail across the street. The neighbor's yard see them. Wind's blowing snow off these trees. And, you know, they you clean that fish up and then you wash that fish and then you sometimes you take the head off the fish and you just take the body but my dad used to love to to take the heads and eat the eyes out of them i don't know why but he's like these are good and they were tasty too the eyes out of these trout that we'd catch you know and the lord when he catches us and brings us to him and puts us in his little fishing bag you know first 
when you first catch that fish before the day's over, you put it on a, la a tagline that's out there and the fish are still alive, you know. And it's like our lives when the Lord catches us and we're, all, we're out there and we're still who we are, you know. But then the, comes the cleaning process by the Lord where he takes us out off of that tagline one by one and he puts us up on this this wooden plank and he begins to descale us and he begins to cut down our stomach and and open us up to the light from him and they and he cleans us up brothers and sisters he cleans us up and then we're ready for consumption for him for his use you see brothers and sisters you don't come out of the water cleaned up and free of all your sins you come out of the water and it's a process through the jesus christ and him working in your life and these pastors that mm -hmm. teach all this other stuff they're wrong and they're preaching they're they're doing these things where they take another man's servant and tell him how he has to live you know and it's jesus christ who loves each and every one of us and he tells us this is what you got to do and it's a process you know, when you come to him and we can't judge and hate on one another, you know, we can't do that. We're supposed to love one another as brothers and sisters like Israel did out. They were all a big family and they loved one another and they did all these things together and they had feast days together and they had parties together and they loved one another and they came to each other's aid. And they helped one another. And the law even talked about this. You know, if a brother killed another brother by accident. And you could go to these cities of refuge. And you could do all these things. It's all over in the law. And the law foreshadowed this thing that was greater and better. And that was the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. To free us. To make that gospel internalized. So no longer it was on the outside. You can look at it. Look at this fish. Looks really clean. But when you cut it open. You can see on the inside. All the dirtiness. And the filthiness. And the and the poop that's inside of it. And all the other things that go on in there. And you can, you can cut that out. You see. And that's what Jesus Christ does in our lives. Brothers and sisters. If we let him. And we understand that. And we allow ourselves to be under the judgment of God so he can forgive us and free us of all these things that are not necessary in our lives, brothers and sisters. Like Paul said, you know, I can eat anything. He goes, I can eat anything, but it's not necessary for me to eat everything. And he goes, and I think about my brothers and sisters, and if it offends them, I don't do it. And I don't lord it over them and preach it over them, my freedom. But we can be free, brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, we can be free. Now I'm going to tell you my rapture dream, the very first rapture dream that I had. Actually, I'll tell you two. And then that'll be it. And this is going to make this video long, so you can stop it now if you want, or you can listen to this. But in the beginning, it was in September, I had a dream that I was working. I used to work for the Bakersfield Fire Department as a fire prevention officer. I was, I was a law enforcement officer. And my law enforcement abilities were in the fire code and life and safety codes and building codes and things like that nfpa 101 and, and life safety and all these things you know the uniform uh, fire code and building code and so we did building inspections and we worked on you know if there was a fire and we believed it was arson or whatever the captains would have us collect information we'd do things and, you know, we had the power to arrest people and put them in jail. And so we were law enforcement officers. And so I dreamed that I was back at work. This was in September of 2011. You know, brothers and sisters, and I was a sinner for so many years. I was backslidden from the Lord until he intervened in my life. Just like he intervenes in your life and everyone's life because he's a God of love and mercy. And it's hard for us to see that because we see how our own dad, you know, wanted to punish us and to do these things. And God is not like that. He's not the punisher of those that he loves that are his sons. He gently tries to bring you back into the kingdom and put you in right standing with himself if you fall away. And that's what happened to me. I'd fallen away for like almost 17 years. And um, I dreamed that I was back at work 
and uh, I uh, while I was at work I was driving my vehicle and the district attorney called me on the phone and you have to understand in law enforcement the district attorney is like having the president call you you know this is the highest authority call me said hey I, I want you to go find this shelving unit it was a silver one like you see in weddings you know they have those those chrome shelving units that are made out of wire that the gifts are on at the reception you know and she she said it was a woman and she said I need you to find this for me and I and so I pulled into station one in Bakersfield and I said well I'll check and see if I can find it here and I got out and there were two guys out of my vehicle and there were two guys pushing a cart and it had household items on it like a dishwasher and or washer and dryer and a microwave and some other things and they were dressed in wedding clothes and the one guy didn't work for the fire department but he worked at Shell Oil Company and he was a Christian and I, I recognized him and I said hey what are you guys doing and they're like uh, well it's moving day didn't you hear it's moving day we're getting out of here and I'm like, and so I was like, no, I didn't hear about this, you know? And I said, do you know where this shelving unit is of Tony's? And they're like, well, I don't know. You know, it was over there in that building, but I haven't seen it. It's not there now. And I don't know where it is. And I said, well, wh why are we, why are you guys moving? What's happening? What's going on? They said, didn't you get the memo? And I said, no, I didn't get the memo. And they were pushing this into engine bay one and uh the, the fire engine was in there and they started laughing they said yeah you guys over in prevention are always the last ones to know about what's going on well we're leaving today and they continued on and so the phone rang again and it was the district attorney and she said have you found it i said well it's not here at station one i said but i'm going to go downtown and i'll meet with tony it was his this guy I knew named tony and i said i'll i'll ask him where it is so i drive down to it's a five-story building and the top story has like a little half building on it and there's parking up there and so I pulled in there and drove to the top and got out and I went in and the place was cleaned up man it was all spick and span and new paint on the walls and silver carpet silver blue and uh, the girls were all dressed in uh, like uh, brides maids gowns and I'm like whoa and they were it was like purples and stuff and really cool looking so I I was like what's going on and they're like what do you mean you know and, I, and so i was just like had to get in there you know and they buzzed me in i came through the they have a secure area and they let me in and i came in and i turned right and i went down the hallway and my secretary was in the hallway and she was dressed the same and i was like what is going on with you guys all dressed up and everything and then the phone rang and it was the district attorney again and she says to me well did you find it did you get home? i said no i'm going into my office to call tony right now and i said he should be back from work about this time and i'll get with him and see if he'll if he knows where it is and she says well how and she goes how can i trust you and i said well because i'm telling you i'm going to do this she said well you know you failed to meet with me that time and i don't know how i can trust you and uh, when I'd went to the work for the fire with the fire department, the Lord had told me I was going to get that job out of all the other applicants, and that He told me that, in fact, there was no job, and He gave me a dream about I was going to, you know, He told me to wake up and go pray for my neighbor, and all this stuff, and then the next day He told me that He was going to give me a job, and it was going to be the the chief of the Bakersfield Fire Department was going to call me and offer me a job. And the job I'd applied for was like six months before this, and they'd already filled all the positions. In fact, they needed 10 guys, and I was number 13. I was like, how can this be, you know? But all of that happened. And the Lord told me that after that, I'd go back to the oil fields for one year. I'd work there at the fire department for 10 years, and then I'd go back for one year to the oil fields, and then after that, I was supposed to do his will. Well, I didn't do that. But in this dream, I wasn't thinking about, hey, I failed to meet with him. And he was like, you failed. She said, you failed to meet with me. And I said, look, I would have never done that on purpose. I said, I'm sorry. You know, when I said, I'll meet with you any time. And, and she's like, her voice changed to a man's voice. And he said, well, how can I trust you? And I said, who is this? He said, I told you, this is the district attorney. 
how can I trust you since you failed to meet with me? And I said, look, I'll go in my office and I'll clean off any day you say, and I'll meet with you any day. I said, I don't care if I have appointments, I'll call them and cancel. He says, any day? And I said, yes, sir, any day. And he says, okay, today. I said, today? He said, yes, the 20, today, the 23rd at 2.30. And I looked at my watch and it was like 2.25 and it was the 23rd and I'm like, uh, okay. And I didn't even go in my office. I said, I'm coming right now. And I went to the end of the hall, made a left and there was no door there really in real life. And there was a hallway on the other side of this door and these big windows and the sky was blue skies and there's an elevator there. I pushed the call button turn around and there's clouds in the sky and I'm like what is going on and the elevator opened up I went inside and Adam Sandler dressed in a white tuxedo like from the movie the wedding singer stands in the door and he laughs ha ah, no no you don't you see that is the old law I was dreaming about God was showing me under the law you can't go up the law does not get you there it's by grace and so I pressed there were two buttons in the back of the elevator. They weren't on the front as you face forward like normally. They were at the back and they were the 18th and the 19th floor and they were this beautiful blue color shining through the button. And uh, the button was like a silver color and then it was carved out to be the number 18 or 19. And I pressed number 19 and I turned around and Adam Sandler said, oh no you don't and he put his hands out and it wouldn't let the elevator close. And then I pressed the button again and again and it wouldn't go up and it like made a dent in it where his head was hitting as he was and there were sparks coming off his hands as the elevator tried to go up and close the door. And I grabbed him by the cummerbund and pulled him in and threw him with my left hand and I threw him against the corner over there and he was just laughing his head off. And I pressed the button and the elevator doors finally closed and we began to go up and I woke up. So that was the first dream. And I was thinking about what does this mean, you know, going to a wedding and on the 23rd and the 18th and the number 19 and all this stuff. Because it was the 18th to the 19th, but that building only had five floors on it and I was on the top floor. So then on November 5th of 2011, I was going to ride my, I have a Harley Davidson motorcycle and it's been sitting for years i haven't rode it in years and years just sitting there but it's a 1969 flh and i was supposed to start it and everything keep the oil running around on the seals and so i i uh i haven't done anything because i just love the lord you know all i could think about is him but anyway i was going to go start that and i went outside i went to the front door and the lord spoke to me and said uh, go lay down and take a nap I have something I want to show you so I was like I opened the door anyway because I, I thought to myself well, that sounded like the Lord just then and I opened it anyway because a lot of times brothers and sisters we hear from the Lord but we don't know it's really him it's this soft almost a childlike whisper that you hear in your head and and I thought well that's well, not him and I opened it and then he said in more in a more distinct way manly way with bass in his voice, he said, I said, go lay down and take a nap. I have something I want to show you. So I just closed the door and I told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to take a nap. And she's like, what? It's four o'clock in the afternoon when you take a nap. You never. And I said, well, I need to lay down. I said, don't, you know, don't let anybody disturb me. And I said, don't let the dogs bother me. And so I pulled a piece of furniture in front of the hallway and I went down there and I laid down. And I said, Lord, I'm not even tired. You're going to have to you know you're gonna have to knock me out or whatever because i'm not tired and so then uh maybe five minutes or ten minutes went by and she comes with this our dog named grace do you understand the theme grace the number five is grace you look up the number five and it's meaning it means grace and then here we have this one dog named grace it's my dog my wife's dog she does show dogs and all this stuff and uh, iris setters and so she says this dog is just tr uh tore the drywall up digging on the corner trying to get in there to get to you you've got to let her come in so I, I said okay so she comes in and she jumped up in bed with me and she curled up in a ball next to my head and just laid down put her head down so i said lord look i said you got to do something i can i'm not tired at all and 
I pulled the covers up over my face for some reason. I never do that. And instantly I was walking down the hallway and I opened the door and went outside and I walked out about five or six steps, maybe 10 steps onto the driveway. We had a huge four, five car driveway and a detached garage. And I was halfway between the garage and the, and the doorway. And I noticed there were clouds in the sky. So I looked up and then I looked back towards the back of the house which was facing the uh, south, kind of the south. And that's where the, you know, the, the valley here is, you know, mountains going around makes a big valley. And so I wanted to see if those clouds went all the way to the end. And they did. And there was a huge oval opening in the sky, maybe 30 miles or 40 miles away. And, uh, I don't know, maybe only 25 miles, but anyway, it was at the edge of the valley, and and there was uh, this oval opening, and it was beautiful, and it was canted at a little angle, and light was streaming out of it. Gold beams of light were streaming out of this oval, and they shined on the ground out there. I couldn't see them because it was going behind my house, but I was shining towards the ground. I could see that, and near the edge of the oval where the clear blue sky and these beams were coming out, there was graduating colors from gray to black, right, in the sky and around this edge of this cloud. And in that area, there were these flashes of light. And I was, I saw that and I called to my wife to come outside. I said, this is so beautiful, man. I'm so lucky I came outside just in time to see this, this light. You know, I mean, see these lightning. It looked like lightning inside of that edge. And I called for her, but she didn't come out. And then I heard, and then the ground began to shake, like back and forward and forth and side to side, not up and down like a normal earthquake. And I'm like, whoa, what's happening? And then I heard a clap of thunder and I heard a trumpet. Well, I heard the trumpet first. And then as I did, I could hear the clap of thunder. And the, I looked up and the sky was rolled back like a scroll and I could see the stars. And there was this round sphere that looked like it was brushed aluminum or 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 silver and in and a hand was pressing out and I knew that was Jesus Christ inside of that. And I knew it was like the rapture. And so right then I heard three beeps and I woke up. And I got up and I'm like, whoa, and I get up and it was it was five o'clock. So there's three fives, the number five of Grace. My dog named Grace laying next to me, um, near my head. And then the, gray, the number five for Grace, which woke me up at exactly five o'clock. And so three beeps, three number fives and three beeps. And then I go in there and I tell my wife, oh man, I had the most fantastic dream about the rapture. She says, ah. You're just watching too much YouTube. That's what it is. So 10 days later, I have the exact same dream. I dream I'm walking out to start my motorcycle. And I laughed. I said, ah, just like in my rapture dream. And I looked up and it was cloudy. And so I looked back to see if that oval opening was there, but it wasn't. And I would yell for my wife to come out because the ground began to shake again like it was. And the trumpet began to blow and I yell, you know, for my wife to come outside and she doesn't come out and I was on my knees and I was praying. And I said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins that I've committed. And I said, especially those sins that are secret sins that I've committed that I don't even know that I've committed against you. Please forgive me of those sins also. And about that, and I had my hands together in a, and I was kneeling. And about that time, something pulled me up into the air at such extraordinary speed that I began to cry out. Ah, it was just like snatched out of danger's harm's way, just jerked in the air. You know, they have this video, I don't know if you've ever seen it, where they were getting these down pilots and they gave them like a balloon and this line that they could reel out and they'd inflate this balloon with helium and it would go up and then a plane had a device on the front of it that looked like a Y and it would hit that string and snatch that guy up in the air and rescue this pilot or whoever was sick. And that's what it was like. I felt no pressure like gravity. When you jump off of something, you can feel gravity pulling you down. Well, I felt that in reverse going up. I could feel this pulling me just up. And I woke up and it was one, like 1.23 in the morning or something. So anyway, brothers and sisters, I want you to have joy in your hearts. 
knowing that the Lord is coming. You know, and that's all I thought about was those rapture dreams. I had a, a third one after that about the pastor of our church and things that really happened in his life. It actually came true, right? And so you can go see these videos if you want. They're in the very beginning of my videos. And that's why I really started this channel was to talk about those things. So anyway, we have hope, brothers and sisters. We have hope and you can have joy that no matter where you are, or how hard your life is, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died in your place to make full atonement for you. And he loves you. And even if you're struggling with sin, you just keep going forward. You keep one foot in front of the other, as that song says. Just do that and keep walking towards Christ. And when you know you've sinned, repent and the Lord will, forg will forgive you. It's, it's him. It's a free gift from him. He loves you. And God Almighty, the creator of everything, he is the one that said, I'm sending my son to do this thing because man can't do it in himself. I gave him the law, one law in the beginning. They couldn't keep that. Then I gave him 613 laws in the Torah, and they couldn't do that. And now I'm sending my son a new covenant I've made with him, a covenant of a gift, a full payment for what they have done against me we are justified it's all through the scripture in the old testament about the sacrificial thing how they took the lamb that did nothing and they killed him for the one that had all the sins on him and they released the one that had sin they put all the people's sin on it and then took it let it out and let it go and then they killed the one without sin it's all in there brothers and sisters the love of god him trying to bring us to a himself he's trying to justify us and he does that by the blood of jesus christ who lived a perfect life that we can't live anyway god bless you let's pray dear heavenly father we come before you in the mighty name of jesus christ and we pray that you would help us realize the love that you have for us and the justification you have given us through christ and the sanctification through his blood and how he died on the cross we thank you, mighty God, for what you've done for us. And we thank you for the fact that we get to live in the United States of America and it's still partially free where we can read your word and pray. And we can assemble together with our brothers and sisters. And your word tells us to forsake not the assembling together of yourselves even the more as the day approaches, as you see it. And we can tell what time it is. Your Israel became a nation again, and now they have the red heifer, and they're getting ready to rebuild the temple and start daily sacrifice. So God Almighty, we thank you for these prophetic things that are coming to pass, showing us that you're on your way, that your son's coming to rescue us, and it's going to be like that when this war happens. He's going to pull us out of here, and it's going to be a miracle, and it's going to be a powerful move of the hand of God because he loves us, and he's doing it because he's going to save us because he wants to. And he made a covenant with us written in the blood of his son. And he'll never fail on that. Thank you, mighty God. We pray for those that are without Christ, that they would find Jesus Christ in their heart. And we ask that you'd help those that are sick, that your hand of healing would be upon them in a mighty way in Jesus Christ. If there are any that are hungry or need something, God, we ask that you'd fill them, that you'd move on them, that you'd help us. Be proper Christians to help those that are cold, that need a drink, a, cold, um, a warm drink or a cold drink or some meal or some clothing. That you'd help us provide for their needs and give them the gospel also. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen.